With the creation of the brand split in 2002, this allowed WWE's new talent and current talent the opportunity to prosper. Obviously, some were not going to get a push regardless, but at the end of the day, somebody like Eddie Guerrero had a better chance of winning a world title on SmackDown. The brand split had its positives and negatives. Some of the SmackDown pay-per-views were dry. And with the buy rates going down, they decided to hold one pay-per-view a month with all the brands. This marked the beginning of the end of the brand split. I mean, at the time, you couldn't go a month without somebody from Raw appearing on SmackDown and vice versa. Eventually in 2011, WWE decided to quietly end the brand split. Raw wrestlers often visited SmackDown. SmackDown guys came to Raw and the shows felt like the early SmackDown days when the biggest wrestlers appeared on both shows. At least at face value because even though Randy Orton was on Raw every week, CM Punk and John Cena would rarely appear on SmackDown. The focus was already on Monday nights and while SmackDown had some nice matches, it somewhat lacked from a storyline standpoint especially after WrestleMania 28. Following WrestleMania 28, SmackDown got very weird. Of course, Sheamus and Cole would appear, but something was off when compared to 2011. At times, it felt like only a handful of wrestlers featured on the show, and for the most part, it would be new talents such as Damian Sandow and Cesaro. Every once in a while, John Cena or CM Punk would continue their Raw feuds, but the one thing that I feel is remembered most from the year is Sheamus' run. He kicked off the year with Daniel Bryan before transitioning to a never-ending feud with Alberto Del Rio, a feud I don't understand how started in April and ended in September. Like, how? It was quite the year for Sheamus, and I'll dive into his run soon. Other than that, the mid-card scene was pretty dry after Christian lost the IC title, and from my memory, Cesaro featured mostly on Raw after winning the US title. And to top it all off, they'd hype a damn replay from Raw. They're making this a premium version of WWE main event, and I just never understood why they turned into a replay show. Sometimes, the segments from Raw would last for like 10 minutes, like imagine waiting from commercials just to see something from another show, a show you watched. SmackDown was mostly the workhorse show previously, but after Raw became 3 hours, the longer matches were mostly on Monday nights, and while they did advance some of the stories on SmackDown, Smackdown, nothing that big actually occurred and in a way it didn't really feel like a TV show where the storylines were advancing because that was mostly for Raw. 2013 though is when they took it a step further. The world title scene was a bit colder compared to previous years, especially when Dolph Ziggler got injured. Jack Swagger was out here main eventing Smackdown like he belonged and the big WrestleMania program was himself and Alberto Del Rio. It was a weird ass time and in the mid card was the Hornswoggle, Natalia and Great Kali trio which I seem to remember but at the same time remember nothing about. There was a lot of pointless matches but the real stuff the real good stuff is the shield matches. It didn't matter what the hell they were doing, it was gonna bang. You'd see that graphic hyping up their main event, and it delivers and then some, especially, especially if Daniel Bryan's involved. Then we could add CM Punk and the Usos, hell even John Cena, and those main events were cracking. From an in-ring standpoint, the shield had 2013 on lockdown. Not just SmackDown, but Raw, the pay-per-views, everything. Also, another positive to come from this year was the world title scene towards the end of the year. John Cena, he brought a much needed importance to the world title. Well, Del Rio was just a meh run. Not because of the matches, but everything else. However, if you weren't in it mainly for the matches and just for the stories to advance, SmackDown was lacking a lot and it only get worse. 2014. Huh, the 2014 feels like a mostly nothing year for the blue brand. As always, there's hidden gems such as Cesaro and Randy Orton, but at times it didn't feel important. Unless you liked six-man tag team matches. SmackDown was pretty dry. It was clear that the show was not must watch and sure you'd have some decent matches, but I can't really recall anything that memorable from 2014. Maybe that Halloween episode and maybe that IC title triple threat, but other than that, all I remember is a bunch of Uso tag team matches and Seth Rollins featuring a lot more often when compared to the other top guys. Of course, John Cena, Daniel Bryan appeared occasionally, but they weren't there every week like Sheamus or the Usos. In an effort to bring back importance to SmackDown, I assume, the show was back on Thursdays. This move led to the show being much better than 2014, and it doesn't mean it was on Raw's level. I mean, you weren't going to see Brock Lesnar, but I seem to remember a lot more when compared to 2014. I seem to remember in particular the women's stories were advanced throughout the year. Daniel Ryan was supposed to hold the IC title for a while, mostly on SmackDown, and it seemed like it was going to be a hell of a run, but it ended within a month because of a concussion. Seth Rollins had the most appearances of a world champion on SmackDown in years. Man would cut a promo in the beginning of the show and wrestle at the end like a workhorse. Rollins featuring often on SmackDown made me more interested in the show. Why? Because he was a champion. It's as simple as that. And plus, back then he was wild and in ring, so for me, I just had to watch. The show in general was around SmackDown a lot compared to others. But with that said, it was still the secondary show and it was clear as day. Sure, the main event featured top tail, but everything in between at times felt unimportant. That said, it wasn't as unimportant as 2014 at all. Like, whoever the champion was at the time would rarely appear. And then there's the final part of the pre brand split SmackDown 2016. Now, 2016 was a very notable year for SmackDown. Personally, one of my favorite eras for the show, but before that brand split SmackDown, it was still the show that played second fiddle to Raw. 
That said, the star power increased significantly. You had Charlotte and Sasha, they were appearing up in 2015, but the roles around here were much bigger. Add to that Chris Jericho and AJ Styles were here. Then you had Roman, Dean, and the card stacked. Hell, Brock Lesnar even appeared at one point. Sure it was once, but that's one more than the previous four years combined. It was still similar to 2015 style SmackDown, you know, somebody like Roman kicked off the show, Chris Jericho cuts a promo at the top of the hour, and the main event features the Shield Brothers. And it was the same usual format, and it kind of took away from the show in general because it didn't feel that important. Especially if it was a rematch from Raw, which happened pretty often. I will say that the only thing that 2016 SmackDown has is more star power. That's all, because other than that, they're literally the same exact show. The way they were styled, the way they were booked, everything was the same. Alright, was pre-Brand Split SmackDown that bad? Compared to old SmackDown, yes. It, it just had to be, because... You used to watch a show that was filled with two hours, it was all packed. In other years, you had Edge going after the title, Rey Mysterio Wildman, something like that. But here, you didn't really have much, and at times, it did not feel like a TV show. It just felt like a better version of main event. The show was not significant, almost ever. Sure, you might see a title change every once in a while, but very rarely. You are going to see some big move at the end of the show, something shocking. And that's unfortunate because I, I loved how the, in the Attitude Era they had Raw and SmackDown. You know, whatever happens on Raw, it leads to something on SmackDown. Something that's not just a rematch from Raw or something like that. It was nice. Here, it was dry and if you weren't in it for the matches, you, you just weren't going to like it. That said, there's a lot of matches out here that really stand out. They were better than a bunch of matches from Raw. Some hidden gems. But for the most part, it's just not a good time period for SmackDown. Because it was so insignificant. You didn't really care much about it unless your favorites were wrestling on a weekly basis. So yeah. Alright, what would you guys think of SmackDown 2012-16? to Please comment down below and that's the first video. Make sure you hit the Superman punch on the like button. And perhaps the curb stop on the subscribe button. Peace. I'm out.